Hello everyone, my name is Kist, and today we're talking about Rarids Online. On Friday, January 19th, we got our first official post from the Rose Online team welcoming 2024. There's a lot of new things to talk about, some very promising things, and some very questionable things, and I just want to discuss it, take a deep dive, and break it down. We start with our very simple introduction. Hello everyone, and a belated Happy New Year. We hope that all of you had a wonderful start to 2024 and are looking forward to everything that is ahead of us, as it currently promises to become a truly exciting year, especially for Rarids Online. Today we want to look at what's next to the game, which updates you can already get very excited about, introduce us to our update strategy, and outline a few more changes in our priorities. Let's dive right in. Alright, let's keep going. Coming soon, the winter update. We took our time to establish some wonderful winter festivities for the current season, but in the end we think it was worth the wait. In February we will release the winter update, introducing a brand new map that is based on areas of the state of Alaska with both huge snowy mountains and calming grass plains. While the mountain will create a large and magnificent natural border, the rest of the map will feature a bunch of both unique places like lakes, waterfalls, and rivers. As if the beauty of the snow weren't enough already, you can also discover polar lights once the sun sets and the world pitches into darkness creating an unprecedented backdrop for your next ride. So we actually look at the two photos. It's a little blurry on steam. We have a beautiful lake and cool mountains in the backdrop. I don't think they put a picture to the waterfall. Now here's another picture of the mountains. So we see some of the grass plains, maybe the lake over there that we saw. Um, it looks really beautiful. I will give credit where credit is due. That looks really beautiful. The winter nights too. This looks really cool as well, but I'm a little thrown back-ish. If it's supposed to be polar, it, does that mean this lake is also ice? Or is it just water and it's like kind of like at a mid-temperature, just really cold water, not freezing? I don't know. I wonder that if the trees will actually give us XP. On Lake Valley, I don't think the trees currently give us XP as the current update. So I wonder if the same thing, because I see the same tree models. Again though, it looks really pretty from the preview screenshots. My only other concern is actually how big the map is. Hi there, Future Kissed, and upon editing this video, I left out some crucial information. If you actually check the Rose Online Discord in their screenshots channel, you can actually find all the answers to this. This is courtesy of Sandy, she's one of the developers on the team, and she says, Some screenshots of our new map, Aurora Falls, which we'll implement with the next update in February. Thanks to Captain Chuchu, who provided the hype map for it. It took me about two months to create the map as it is. Kimei then finished it. So we hope you'll enjoy it. It's bigger than the current maps, and we took your feedback series and added a lot of flat areas without hills where you can build your perfect railways and towns. The map will have pre-placed all industries, including our new gold industry chain. And I'll flash some photos of it on screen now but it's all very, very cool. Thanks to Sandy for this information. We still don't know how much bigger the map is, but it is indeed bigger. Um, here's a picture of one of the waterfalls right now, and it actually looks really, really cool. All right, let's get back to other kist and continue the video. Let us keep going though. That's not all, however. A new industry chain awaits you, and it's just as shiny as the entire update. The gold industry chain will require the attention of all railroaders. No need to rush things, you'll have plenty of time to get familiar with the material. Enjoy the gold rush, but be careful not to catch gold fever. By the way, we're also shipping cargo in a new set of rolling stock and a brand new locomotive with the winter update, which can handle the snowy tracks through the mountain with ease. More details will follow very soon. Okay, a few things to unpack with this. We're getting a brand new industry train, which is awesome because it gives us more variety in what we can do with our railroads. With Pine Valley, you can honestly just focus on the lumber side of it. Pine Valley it came packed with lumber and oil. That's pretty much it. If you, if you follow the normal progression of the industries, you'll get the oil chain. Now, you can mix this with the agricultural chain. And where does it mix? It mixes with the coal aspect. The only two common things between the oil industry and the agricultural industry chains is the coal mine. So you need to be able to fuel the coal mine to fuel the meatpacking plant. That needs coal to operate. Well, how do you get coal? 
you need lumber to the sawmill, but wait, you need rails from the smelter, so you need to have the iron mine. So to get the agricultural train fully working, you don't need any of the oil industries. Just basically scrap the oil fields, the iron works, and the refinery, and you have all the other industries you need for the agricultural industry. They don't show us what is going to be in the gold update itself. A few people on the Discord have asked if there's going to be any updates to the mines themselves. So like the iron mine and the coal mine, are they getting an update? Are we going to have more variety with the type of buildings that we're going to get? And then just even the cars in general, are we still going to be able to use our hoppers now? Are there going to be a new set of hoppers? What engines are coming? Like what is going on? Are we going to get an actual use for the snow plow? There is so much to ask. There's so much to wonder about and already just a few paragraphs. My only concern, the thing that causes me to have the most pause, is the amount of performance this is going to have. This map looks really beautiful, but it's no secret that Railroads Online is not the most resource friendly on your GPU. So with all the light mechanic that's going on, I wonder if it's going to tank my frame rates. We see this currently in the game with the passenger cars. If you run even like five passenger cars at night, the light reflections just kill the game. It, I go from like 60 FPS down to 30, 40 territory, just running a few passenger cars at night. It sucks. I wonder if that's gonna be the same thing with one, the polar lights reflecting off the lake and just e everything. Does the snow reflect any light? Is that gonna cause me frame rate issues? It, it just gives me a little bit of concern. So I hope that with these next few updates coming in February, I hope that some of these issues are addressed or if they were noticed that they maybe are were addressed in just some manner. Without any further ado, let's just keep going. Let's talk about it more. If you're following our official Trello roadmap, which you totally should, you might have seen a few of our upcoming updates already listed. These updates will all ship within the next few months and focus on numerous areas where we've decided that, where we've received a lot of feedback indicating the need for both general but also quality of life improvements. We want to take the opportunity to quickly summarize them in more detail. The map update. In very close cooperation with our co-development team at Black Sheep Studios, we will overhaul the entire way the 2D map works. We will feature an overhauled HUD, greatly improved readability and visibility, comfort tools like a zoom option, and easy to understand icons. In addition, there will finally be a mini map so that you want to open the full map every time you just want to know where you currently are, making life as a rail worker so much easier. The UI update. This update will be released alongside the map update as they just fit so well together. The UI artists at Black Sheep are overhauling the entire UI from the main menu to a singular button, creating a completely new experience. The UI will appear less technical and more stylized, therefore improving readability and visibility. We'll share the first foot oh, we'll share the first footage as soon as possible. The spline update. The spline system is an ongoing topic that requires additional improvements. We plan to upgrade it, making it easier to create splines and align facilities by enabling them to conveniently slap to sp ugh, snap to splines. Wait, snap to spines and rails. All right, we're just gonna have you stretch against the wall, turn, and then. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> That's a typo. That's kind of funny. I had to give myself a little aneurysm trying to <laughs> read that. Anyhow, snap to splines and rails, plus will make the spline system much more understandable. The replacing behavior will be simplified and explained in-game in a more coherent fashion. We're also displaying easy-to-grasp error message and feedback should something not work out. We're also making re-railing much easier. Yay! We'll reveal even more detail about each step date the closer we get to them. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I have a lot to say about this. We're gonna go backwards, the spline update. This thing has been on my radar for a few months now. I've known about it. The Trello map came out, I think, before the anniversary update. So we've known about it for a few months now. However, we already had an original spline update around, oh God, June 2022. The time between June 2022 into October 2022 into the first anniversary, we were expecting the spline update. You might remember that's when stuff hit the fan, but that's something else entirely. I'm not going to touch on that. The thing I'm going to touch about is the original spine update. What what happened? Did we actually get a spine date? Why are we getting a spine update now? I thought that already happened. Well, in from May 2022 into August 2022, we were expecting a spine update. The main thing that was actually going to change was the physics interaction on the rails. For the longest time, the trains were just like skis, following parallel rails on a destined path. 
you just build the little trenches or the track and the engine would just follow along to it they would hug it forever some of the reason that trains would explode was because if you had two pieces overlap let's say a piece of groundwork the hitbox for the groundwork and the rails sometimes the hitboxes would just overlap and the train itself since it's just skidding on the rails it would collide with the other hitbox and then go boom just explode it it was funny it was awesome at the time but it was a major problem so the spline update at the time in 2022 was going to address the physics issues when it came to the rails yes it was going to have a better mechanic to building the splines but it was also just going to make the physics interaction on it a lot better there was cutoff simulation planned to help with the physics there was other things planned it was just going to change the, basically the core functions of the game the physics that didn't happen um, maybe the, some of the things that were promised were a little too complicated and it just got delayed even further. Come 2023, we finally see some of those things. Most recently, in December, we have cutoff simulation and the physics got updated ever so slightly, but they're going to keep working on it. As you'll see, I think they talk about it here at the end. We're slowly working up to that. Now, as you can see, the spline update is really going to be about the building system. And my biggest cry with the building system now is it's too time consuming. Just to switch pieces, you have to right click, press G, click back into the track construction, navigate to the next piece you want, click it, place it, and if you mess up, you have to right unclick it, go to your delete option, remove it, remove the delete option, go back into the menu, go back into track construction, go back and pick your item, and so on, so on. For me, I've developed a system, I'm very quick at this. But for people who are not track orientated, they're train orientated, this is just so slow. It makes it so tedious. One of the reasons I started the channel is because I recognized this issue and I just wanted to fix it and share my knowledge of how I do things. And oh my God, here we are two years later. I'm kind of like a pro at this stuff. And yet they're gonna change it. <laughs> oh no, all my work gone. But I couldn't really care about that. I just hope that they make it easier to actually pick the piece. You know, if I wanted to create a little S bend around a piece of terrain, or I wanted to create a loop, I hope I can do that in one go. I hope I don't have to change anything. I hope there's like a pre plan option on the Trello map. I think it gives us some more information. Um, I might show that on screen now. I just hope that it is a rather strong improvement. What's going to save it is just making sure it doesn't take too long. If it takes more than a few simple operations to place a piece of track or switch track pieces, then it's too long in my opinion. All right, the next two, the map update and the UI update. In December, we got a lot of flack about the new driving UI, and I will admit I gave my criticism about it too. I actually didn't mind the look of it, the speedometers and everything, I don't mind. My only grief was it was just too big, it took up too much of the screen. If they consolidate, maybe make it smaller, or get rid of the orange box that highlights everything, that will do fine. You can see it fine during the day and you can see it fine during the night. I just hope it doesn't have that giant orange box around it. Honestly, Rails Online, Captain, I'm looking at you Captain, pass on the word. Oh, okay. But in all seriousness, if they just got rid of that orange box surrounding everything and downsized the scale of it, it would work in the game. It works, it looks fine, but I am not Black Sheep Studio, I am not Rails Online. It will be up to them and I will respect the decision whatever they decide. The map update, that's, well like, I, I gotta say it, I gotta be the Captain Obvious here. Um, you can book a hotel later. They're basically trying to get rid of Rails Online Extended. It's what it feels like, and I, and I know this because Captain Choo Choo has been on record, I can ask other people to prove this for me, that they're basically trying to obsolete Rails Online Extended. I personally simply like it for the fast sprint. If they, I know they upped the player speed a little bit when it comes to walking and sprinting, but the fast sprint is such a nice tool. I don't even care about the flying sometimes or like the map itself. That That's a nice quality of life. Um, and I'm excited for this. As long as they make it coherent, not too invasive, and that, just simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Simple icons, modern icons, a small mini map that I can toggle with M, maybe if I hold M for too long or double click M fast, you know, it pulls up the mini map or control M or something. 
as long as they just make it simple for us to use, simple to look at, and fun to interact with, it's going to be awesome. This next topic is the biggest controversy I think so far, multiplayer improvements. It is no secret that the multiplayer side of Railroads Online has been talked about for months, if not years at this point. People have been asking for dedicated servers. People have been asking for like Steam interaction, the Steam workshops. So we can add mod support. Um, people, I know one guy, he made a tool that acts like a dedicated server. It automatically starts his PC. We can connect to it. I can connect to it from my state, from my house. I can start his PC. But there's also just in-game differences. A lot of desync happens when you play the multiplayer aspect. So let's see what it has to say. One of the most frequently mentioned areas in need of improvement is the entire online component. Fact. And we've heard your feedback about that. Our team and the great people of Black Sheep have put a lot of work into improving it greatly and minimizing pain points as much as possible. Over the course of the next update, starting with the winter update, we will therefore gradually introduce several multiplayer improvements. Our internal tests are very promising, indicating the elimination of issues like popcorning, for example. We also want to generally reduce desync issues and minimize stuttering, but as mentioned, it's a process that will take some time. Before I go on, there's only one thing, really, really, really quickly. I hate, me as a person, personally, I hate vagueness i'd rather be as specific as possible and be on top of my information than simply give you vague justifications or vague nuances to stuff i i rather know than be unknowing and that's a little self-centered at times i do admit but it helps when it comes to pinpointing information and being accurate this is one of the things where i feel like we're not being fully accurate about or just at least not being told everything we've heard your feedback about that putting a lot of improving it greatly at minimizing pain points as much as possible what what are those what are the minimizing pain points what does that mean what was the issue with the code like i will admit i am not a coder but i want to know like this has been an issue for so long the desync the popcorning i want to know what in the code like what in the game has made it to this point. Why has it been in the game for so long? Was it known? Was it something that just came up? Again, that might be a little self-centered and I do apologize, I do recognize that. But I hope I'm not the only one. It makes me annoyed at times that, oh, we're trying to fix it. Trying to fix what? Oh, we're the, the, the issues. What are the issues? Oh, the multiplayer issues. Okay, what the multiplayer issues? Oh, there have been people having issues on their PC when they play multiplayer. Okay, what are, th it's just a full feedback circle. I think, though, it would be great community feedback if they just give us a little bit of, you know, material, a little bit of lore and tell us what was some of the issues. Maybe just be specific and be like, oh, one of the issues we had for a long time was popcorning uh, due to visual bugs with the hopper car. We looked at it. We took in the feedback. It studied it intensively. Turns out it was one of the meshes on the wheels interacting with the axle. You know, I, even if that's a BS thing. I'd rather hear that because that gives me like, oh, that makes more sense. It was a visual bug with the hopper. That makes sense. Uh, so now maybe I want to worry about it so much. I can use the hopper without any consequence. It would just give some sense of closure, I feel like. Even more great things are planned. From new props and buildings over to new quality of life features like an undo button and a great experience for new players. A lot of other things are planned for this year. We also plan to introduce another new map, new rolling stock, overhauled loading screens, and much, much more. Something that will follow later this year will be the introduction of a player's right management system, allowing for server hosts to have a greater control about what other players can do and what they can't. That's not all, however. Our team is working on so many other projects in peril that we can't reveal quite yet. Too early at the moment, but the sooner we get there, the more we can finally spill. Okay, again, similar thing. An undo button for what? For like purchases? Yeah, an undo button for purchases. That seems like the most things. Here's another thing that's been a controversy. The last few updates, again, from I think October, from the anniversary update to December, have had some bugs regardless. And that's a feature of every update. There's always going to be a bug, either big or small. And one of the critiques we've seen in the community is stop adding content, stop adding content, stop giving us more and focus on the game itself. And while that is harsh to hear as a developer, I understand the sentiment. There, are, I've know a lot of people personally, I know people who watch my videos and there are friends, I will talk to them on and off throughout the day. They've expressed to me that they can't play Rares Online because of the last few updates. They, have, they stopped playing Roads Online because they literally can't load up the game. 
and something with the content they added or something they changed to the game itself has made it unplayable for them. Whether it was the direct direct X uh, changes or something in the game itself, whether it's a prop or whatever the case might be. And it's frustrating, I get it. My friends know, my people on Discord, they know that my PC is rather good. It can handle a lot of things. So I'm very optimistic that with these promising changes and the promising updates, that they will get on top of the game itself. I'm excited for all this content stuff. This this actually looks really cool. And just the promising feature of like a new steam engine or a new hopper, new cars, new places, something new is so exciting. I'm excited that they're adding this stuff, but I also have to watch out very carefully that it's not gonna break my PC at the same time. So Rose Online, I think you guys have your work cut out for you. I'm very excited to see what it is, and we're going to end with what it has to say here. But I know myself as a player and myself as a person in the community who's talked to people about this, we're ready. We're ready for a change. We're ready for the game to be a little bit more stable, and we're ready to actually experience it in its full capacity. Let's end with this. Changes to our update release strategy. One last thing. We took your feedback to heart and decided to change our strategy for releasing updates. Right now, it appears to be fairly random if we put an update into the beta branch prior to its release or not, despite expensive testing efforts prior to each and every release. Releasing an update to a huge player base with the different hardware and software environments always comes with risks. Issues could pop up which can kind of possibly have anticipated. Based on all your feedback, we will make the beta branch now the first destination for every new update. Once an update is released, it will be available on the public beta branch that will start the winter update in February. Once we are sure the beta build is stable, we will be, it will be moved to the default branch. And that's it for today. Have a good time in the valley and never stop shaping the world, so real, world of Rares Online. Your Rares Online team. Okay, it's kind of funny we were, we were just talking about that. That's another thing I've seen that I will comment on, is people were so quick to attack the dev team attack the game mike my pc won't start it doesn't work like i never had this issue with any other game but now i can only have this issue with your game so it's your guys's fault your game's bad hold up wait a minute it is common knowledge at this point that we know laptops and pcs are very different for each other laptops are usually lower grade than pcs but it can at times be the opposite there are some laptops that are better than pcs However, there is always going to be some difference in hardware for practically almost every PC in the world. There are some that are exact replicas or very similar, but there is always going to be little nuances in the PC themselves. Someone could have my exact build but with an AMD or CPU instead of an Intel one. The point is, you have to be very careful because sometimes you will have a game that just won't work. It could work for one person but not work for you and vice versa. You could play a game that doesn't work for me but it works for you just fine or I have to do some more shenanigans just to get it working. I've done it in the past with other games, especially Call of Duty. It's just there are little nuances you have to do depending on the game you play. Whilst because of the most recent updates, I do understand that it can be hard to play Rares Online. However, it may simply come down to a question of hardware over the game itself. Honestly, what it feels like at times is that people want the Rares Online team to be the enemy of the train sim community. That's not the case. I've talked to Kitsune, I've talked to Captain Choo Choo, I've talked to Sandy, I've maybe replied to CD Trumpet once maybe, but the, the whole thing is there are good people trying to make an awesome game. I know Century of Steam's almost here, and like we're all very excited about it. The highest synth, whatever, each time Hypes posts a video about it is always very cool. It's always exciting to see what they're going to do. It looks like to be a very enjoyable game for us. And same thing with Railroads Online. It's like, I'm probably going to love both games, honestly. I give my fair share of critiques here and there, but I know they're trying their best, and that's what's most important to me. I mean, they, they do listen to us. On Discord, you, you can see the developers are in there every day. They're answering people, so... If you have an issue, they're quite literally a few clicks away, depending on where you are in the world. <sighs> all right, that's, I think, quite enough said. You can all check it here. I'll link the Steam post so you guys can check it out in the description if you haven't already. But this is some exciting stuff. I'm almost done with the next track laying New Horizons video. I know the new map is coming out in February, so I do plan to release at least the Lake Valley set of track laying uh, here over the next college semester, so through May. So we'll see. Keep out a look at it. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. This is a little bit of a different video for what I normally do, but I think it's one that we need to cover. 
and just talk about and get a discussion happening. But if you're new to the channel and new to my content, welcome. And if you like what you saw, maybe consider liking, subscribing, ringing the notification bell, and always try to stay up to date for when the next video releases. All right, everybody. My name is Kist, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.